just to recap, in number 11 on your notes, we finished off with length matters when it comes to finding the fundamental frequency of a standing wave. We also examined the idea of tension and material, and specifically I introduced the term linear mass density, and then said that's what we're going to figure out in the lab. What is the relationship velocity has to tension and to linear mass density, which is u, and the lab specifically, you were finding A and B. So hopefully you've done that and you've processed that data. And just as a reminder, linear mass density is the mass per unit length of string or whatever it is you're looking at. That's U. And the tension, especially on the lab, that was the weight you were adding. So that was Mg. So what you saw was as you added weight here, the wavelength changed. So the wavelength depended on the weight. So if we look up at the original equation we've got, if our frequency is 60 hertz and our wavelength changes, that must mean the velocity changes. And of course the velocity is gonna change based on that tension and that linear mass density. So what does it equal? And hopefully your results demonstrated it. Well, the velocity equals the square root of the force of tension over the linear mass density. So let's see if this made sense. As we increase the tension, added more mass, the velocity increased. Maybe that makes sense. The linear mass density increased, the velocity would decrease. While we didn't try different strings, this should make sense. If you have a more rigid string, it's not going to vibrate as fast. The wave will not be able to go through it as quickly. So let's look at the way you probably saw it happen. Putting it all together, we've got velocity is equal to lambda times frequency and also equal to the force of tension uh, divided by the linear mass density, square root of all of that. So if our frequency is constant, 60 hertz, it can't change then our wavelength is gonna be dependent upon the tension. That's what we were changing in the lab. That was the independent variable. This is constant, but we kind of know, you know what's gonna happen with that because more rigid material, the wave is not gonna move as quickly through the material. So let's think about this. If we added more weights, we got fewer antinodes. That, you should have observed that. As the weight increased, your antinode number decreased. Here's where it kind of hurts a little bit. The fewer antinodes, the greater the wavelength. Let's kind of test that out. If we have one antinode and it's one meter long, well, that means the wavelength is two meters. Notice we've only got half wave. When well, that same meter, if I have two antinodes, well, then my wavelength is one meter. So the fewer the antinodes, the greater the wavelength. So the greater the tension, the greater the wavelength.